Hey guys, in today's video I'll be showing you how to crochet this giraffe rattle. I have made one of these before for my friend's baby shower and I really like how it turned out. I didn't write the pattern as I was making that one so I decided to do it again and I freehanded this one and while I was making this video I was writing down the pattern so this is what it looks like. It is messy because I was literally just writing everything down as I was making this video but that's the front and here's the back. I know towards the end it, it might be a little bit harder to understand especially like the band part but if you're interested if you can read everything else except the band you can just go to part four where i'll be making that part but yeah this is what it looks like and then um the one that i originally made doesn't look exactly like this one because i again i didn't write down the pattern when i first made it so that's why it doesn't look exactly the same but i think it looks pretty similar and really cute and then i'll let you hear how it sounds but yeah isn't that super cute if you're interested in making one of these i'll let you know what you'll need in the next few clips I will be using a 4mm crochet hook. I will also be using this wooden ring. I did purchase mine on Shein.com. I believe it was a pack of around 10 for 5 to $6. You can get yours on Amazon. I didn't really look up the exact measurements because it was the first time I was making it, so I just went based off of the reviews I saw, the picture reviews. But I will throw up a screenshot of the exact ones that I purchased. To make a rattle noise, I did use this little container here that you can get from any machine, like um, toy machine, and it is a little bit on the bigger side, but it was the only one that I had left, and in the inside I did put some rice. You can put beans or whatever you want in the inside to make the noise. I'll show you what it sounds like. So you don't need too much rice in there, and if you can try to get a smaller container, that would probably be better. Um, this just means I won't add too much stuffing into our little giraffe. You will also need some scissors, a stitch marker stuffing or fiber fill, and embroidery needle and embroidery thread. Here I have blacked for the eyebrows. If you wanted, you can also use some pink to make blush, but I'm not going to do that on mine. I'll also be using some black felt for the eyes and a hot glue gun. Lastly, for our yarn, I will be using three different colors. Of course, you're going to need a yellow. This one right here is the Karen's One Pound Yarn. It's in the color Sunflower. All of these are a weight of four yarn. Um, I don't remember the names of this or the brand because I don't have the label on it. I do have the label on this one still, so that's why I know the name. But for the other two colors, just get a darker brown and then a kind of... I was trying to think of a name, but like an off-white um, kind of yarn, and this is going to be for the nose, and this will be for the patches. We're going to begin by creating the top of the giraffe's head, so we will need to start off with our yellow yarn, and I haven't made a tutorial in a while, so hopefully I can easily show you how to do the magic circle. But what we do first, or what I like to do first, is take my yarn and lay it against my fingers, then I'll take my thumb, place it on the yarn, and then I'll take the rest of the yarn and wrap it around the three fingers. As I bring it forward, I'm just going to go across that yarn and create an X. Then I'll just bring the yarn back down, so it's down the back of my hand, and then I'll take this pinky, my, this pinky, my pinky, and just place it on that yarn, not holding too tight because you will need the yarn to move. So now let's take our crochet hook, we're going inside the circle, and then we're going to go and grab the front piece of the X. So as I go through, I'm going to the front to grab that front piece of the X. So I'll pull through, and I'll just bring it through the circle, and now we have this loop. Okay, so kind of just tugged it a bit. But now that we have this loop, we can go back into that same part of that yarn. So the one that was left over here, we'll go under, grab the yarn, and pull through. I'll just let go really quick, and you can see here's our circle. So you can just grab everything and just tighten it up. And there is your magic circle. You can pull on this part of the yarn to shorten or close up the circle. And now we can start crocheting into the circle. We are now going to crochet six times into the circle. So you have to work around the circle and this part of the yarn as well. So that will help you adjust or close up the circle at the end. So let's take our crochet hook, go inside the circle, grab that yarn and pull it through the circle. You now have two loops on the hook. Let's yarn over our hook and pull through both loops. That was a single crochet. I'll show that one more time slowly. So take your crochet hook, go inside the circle. Now you're grabbing that yarn, pulling it through. You have two loops on the hook. You yarn over and pull through both. So that was two. So now you have to do um, it four more times equals six. So I'll just go a little bit faster. That's three four, five. 
Now for my sixth one, I would, what I like to do first is take the yarn, pull on it to close up the circle. That way I can just round it out um, nicely as I do my last one. So let's go ahead and do our last single crochet into the magic circle. There's my two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through both. And that is the end of round one. At this point, you could add a stitch marker, but I personally don't think you need it because you should be able to keep track of round two easily since you're just going to be increasing into each one of these stitches. And if you do that, you should end up with 12 in total. So um, if you want to put your stitch marker, go ahead and put it into this last one, but I'm just going to leave it out. And for round two, let's go ahead and do an increase into each one of these stitches. I will demonstrate two times slowly and then I'll do the rest off camera. So to increase, you're going to go into that first stitch here and we're doing a single crochet. So just go into that stitch, grab some yarn and pull it through. We have two loops on the hook. Let's yarn over and pull it through. So that was one single crochet. To make it an increase, you need to do the same thing into that same stitch. Let's go into the same stitch, grab the yarn, pull it through, two loops on the hook, yarning over, pulling through both. So that was my first increase. Now I'll do that again throughout all of the, the rest of the stitches. So I'll show that one more time. So let's go into that stitch. That's my first single crochet and my second into the same stitch. So now I'll do the rest off camera and then I'll be right back. So I'm back just to show you my last increase going into that last stitch here. So I'll just do one single crochet and another into the same stitch. So that's my last increase and now I can take my stitch marker and place it into the last stitch. We're now done with round two and you have 12 stitches in round two. For round three, we're going to start off with an increase into the first stitch. So let's go into this first stitch. That was my first single crochet. And remember to make it an increase, you need to do that same thing into the same stitch. So that is my second single crochet into the first stitch. Into the next stitch, we're just going to do one single crochet. So let's go into that next stitch and do one single crochet. So now you're going to repeat those two steps all the way through until you get 18 stitches in total in round three. So I'll demonstrate once more. We're repeating the same thing. So we have to start off with an increase. Let's go into our next stitch and do that was one and two into the same stitch. And you have to follow that by single crocheting into this next stitch. And now I'll just repeat that until you get your 18 stitches in total. And I'll do this one a little bit faster. So I'm just going back with an increase into the next stitch. And the next one I'll do one single crochet. So I'll finish the rest off camera and then I'll be right back. Then I'm towards the end. I just want to show you um, my last two steps, which is basically the same thing, but I just wanted to show you the ending. So we're going into this second to last stitch and doing, and we're doing an increase. And then into the last stitch, I'll remove my stitch marker and do one single crochet. And I'll put my stitch marker back in and we are now done with round three and we should have 18 stitches in total in this round. Moving on to round four, let's start off with an increase once again into that first stitch. So let's go ahead and do our first single crochet and our second into the same stitch. Now you're going to follow that by single crocheting into the next one, two stitches. So here's the next stitch. I'm doing one single crochet into the next stitch. I'll do one single crochet and now I'm repeating those steps all the way through until I get 24 stitches in total in round four. So I'll demonstrate once more going into that next stitch. You need to start off with an increase. So let's go ahead and do that first single crochet. And there goes my second into the seam stitch. Now let's follow that by doing a single crochet into that stitch and the next one. So the next two. So I'm just doing one into that stitch 
going into the next stitch and doing one single crochet. Now let's repeat that all the way through until we get 24 stitches in total in round four. Now that I'm towards the end, I just want to show you one last time the ending part. It's basically the same thing, but um, I just want to show you this one last time. So towards the end, I'm just going to do my last few stitches going into the next stitch, or my last three stitches. I'll start off with my increase. And then I'm going to single crochet into the last two stitches. So let's go into this next one. I'll now remove my stitch marker and single crochet into that last stitch. Place my stitch marker back in and I now have 24 stitches in total in round four. Round five, we're going to once again start off with an increase into the first stitch. So let's go into this first one here and do our increase. That was one and there's two single crochets into the same stitch. Now we're going to single crochet into the next one, two, three stitches. So just do one single crochet into each of those stitches. Just did my first one, moving on to the second and my final. Now you're going to want to repeat those steps all the way through until you get 30 stitches in total in this round. So I'll demonstrate once more. Let's go ahead and start off with an increase into the next stitch. There goes one and my second single crochet into the seam stitch. Now we're going to single crochet into the next one, two, three stitches. That was my first, second, and third. Okay, so just go ahead and repeat that all the way through until you get 30 stitches in this round. So once you finish round five, you should end up with your 30 stitches. And we now have one more round of increasing to do. So what we're going to do for round six is let's start off with an increase into the first stitch. So let's, there's my first stitch. Let's go ahead and do our increase. That was one and two. Now we're going to single crochet into the next one, two, three, four stitches. So just do one single crochet into each of those. That was my first, second, here's my third, and there goes my fourth. Now you're going to have to repeat that all the way through and this time once you're done you should end up with 36 stitches in total and I'll just um, repeat this once more before I go off camera. So let's go into our next stitch and start off with an increase. So hit this one here, that was one, and here's my second single crochet into the same stitch to make that an increase. Now you follow that by single crocheting into the next one, two, three, four stitches. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember just one single crochet into each of those. One, two, three, and this next one is the fourth. So now I'll repeat that off camera until I get my 36 stitches in round six. Once you finish round six, you should now have 36 stitches in total in this round. For the next portion of the video, I won't be showing it on camera because it's just creating the length, which means you're just going to be single crocheting the entire time. You're not going to change any stitch count. You're just going to create the main portion of this phase. So I don't want to take up too much time on the video, but um, I will come back and let you know how many I do. Right now, um, I'm just kind of winging it. So I'll let you know um, how many I end up doing. But the first one I did was freehand and I never, um, um, wrote down a pattern for it so as I'm making this video I'm writing it down right now but um, yeah so since I'm just winging it I'll be back in a bit and let you know how many I did just in case you're confused um, literally just go ahead into each one of these stitches and do one single crochet and for the entire um, for every round you do you will be ending up with 36 stitches in total because you are not changing anything we are just creating the length so I'm working on my first round of just all single crochets so again i will be back and let you know how many rounds i end up doing
guys i'm back and this is what it looks like so i ended up doing a single crochet round for rounds seven all the way to round 12 and this is what it looks like so you can see that i already wrote down round 13 but you can go ahead and pause this video so you can do all of your rounds and then once you're ready we're going to work on round 13. so for round 13 we're going to start off with an invisible decrease and then single crochet into the next four repeating that and you'll end up with 30 stitches in that round so now we're starting to close it off we won't put the little ball in just yet because um, it will still fit after this decreasing round so let's go ahead and start off with our invisible decrease so to do an invisible decrease you're going to be going into the first two stitches but you're only going into the front loops only so you can see here is a full stitch usually we would go you know right through it but for the invisible stitch you need to go Take your crochet hook, go into the front of your stitch, go right through the middle, and push up. Then bend your hook down, and do the same thing to the following stitch. So I'm bending my hook down, I'm going through that middle of the front, or <laughs> the middle of the stitch, and then now I have my three loops on the hook. I'm going to take my yarn, yarn it over the hook, pull through those two loops, one, two. I now have two loops left on the hook, so I'm going to yarn over and pull through the last two. And that is an invisible decrease. And now we're going to single crochet into the next one, two, three, four stitches. So let's go ahead and do one single crochet into each of those. Just did my first, moving on to the second, my third, and fourth. Okay, so now let's repeat this one more time. Well, you're going to repeat it throughout the whole thing, but I'll show you probably two more times just in case the decrease doesn't make sense. But what we're going to do first is um, let's go ahead and go through the front loop only. So take your crochet hook, push through the middle, bend your hook down, do the same thing to the following stitch, go through the middle. We have three loops on the hook. Let's yarn over our hook and go through the first two loops. You have two loops left, let's yarn over and pull through the last two. And then now let's single crochet into the next one, two, three, four stitches. So I'll do this a little bit faster. Since it's just a single crochet. Now I'll demonstrate the decrease once more before I go off camera. So let's go into these two stitches here. Take your crochet hook push through the middle of it go by going to the front first then the middle bend your hook down do the same thing to the following stitch just going straight through the middle i have three loops on the hook i'm yarning over my hook and pulling through the first two loops i now have two loops left i'm yarning over pulling through the last two and then i'll just go ahead and single crochet the four and then repeat this until i end up with 30 stitches in total in round 13. this is what it looks like after our first decreasing round and you should have your 30 stitches in total in this round so we will stuff it in the next round but i think we should be, i should be able to fit this in in the next round so mine is a little bit bigger but hopefully you guys found a smaller one and um, this just only means i won't be adding too much stuffing because it won't really fit in there but Let's go ahead and move on to round 14 and do our next decreasing round. So let's start off the same way by doing an invisible decrease. So working into the first two stitches, let's go into the front loop only. So let's take our crochet hook and push through the middle. Then let's bend our hook down and do the same thing to the following stitch. It's a little bit hard to maneuver when you're first doing it, but um, now let's go ahead and yarn over our hook and pull through those first two loops. You now have two loops left on your hook. Let's yarn over and pull through those last two. So next, you're going to do a single crochet into the next one, two, three stitches. So just go ahead and do one single crochet into each of those. Here's my second and third. Now, if you repeat that all the way through, you should end up with 24 stitches in total. So let's go ahead and repeat this one more time on camera, and then I'll be finishing the rest off camera. So going into the next two stitches, let's do our invisible decrease. Let's take our crochet hook, 
go into the front loop only. Bend your hook down and do the same thing to the next stitch. Oops. There we go. I have my two or three loops on the hook. I want to yarn over and pull only through the first two loops. I have two loops left on the hook. Let's yarn over and pull through the last two loops. Now we're going to single crochet into the next one, two, three stitches. Okay, and then I'll repeat that off camera, and um, I actually think I need to stop this now. So before I finish um, going around decreasing, I'm going to add a little bit of stuffing in mine. If your ball is not as big as mine, you can go ahead and just finish this round and then stuff it after. But because, again, this is huge, let me do this now. I'm just going to add a little bit of stuffing to the top because I want it to be a little bit soft on the edges. I'll put that in there. And then um, I'll, I'll put a little bit more stuffing around the sides, like super, a super thin amount. Doesn't need to be too much. But I'll do this off camera and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I just finished round 14 and you can see that I also stuffed the edges just a bit. So once you're done with round 14, remember you need to have your 24 stitches in that round. And we are almost done with the head portion. So next, let's go ahead and start off with our invisible decrease once again for round 15. So it will be a little bit harder if your um, ball thing is like mine because it makes it a little bit hard to like hold on to the sides. But again, hopefully you found something a little bit smaller to put on the inside. So let's go ahead and start off with our invisible decrease. Going into the front loop only of your first two stitches. You have your three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through the first two loops. And then yarn over and pull through the last two. This time you're single crocheting into the next one, two stitches. So go ahead and just do one single crochet into each of those. And try not to grab the stuffing. Maybe a little bit hard, but there we go. So now let's go ahead and repeat that all the way through until you end up with 18 stitches in total in round 15. So once again, let's start off with our invisible decrease by going into the front loop only of your two stitches. There we have my three loops on the hook. I'm yarning over and pulling through the first two loops. Yarn over and pull through the last two. Let's follow that by single crocheting into the next one, two stitches. And then now I'll finish the rest off camera. See that it's now starting to close up just a bit more and as you keep decreasing in each of these rounds if you feel the need to stuff it go ahead and just do that little by little that way it won't be too hard once it closes up too much so you can go ahead and just add some to the side if you think you need more but now that we're done with round 16 we have our 12 or sorry we're done with round 15 we now have our 18 stitches we can go on and move on to round 16 which is where we're going to do our invisible decrease first. Again, sorry if it's a little bit hard to see, but it's just a little bit difficult to hold on to. So um, let's go ahead and do our invisible decrease first. Let's go into our front loop only of the two stitches. We have our three loops on the hook. Let's yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, pull through the last two. This time we're single crocheting into the next stitch, just one stitch. And then you'll be repeating that all the way through until you end up with 12 stitches in total in this round. So let me go ahead and demonstrate once more. Let's go into our next two stitches and do the invisible decrease by going into the front loop only. We have our three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through the first two yarn over pull through the last two and then let's single crochet into the next stitch and then go ahead and repeat those steps all the way through until you get your 12 stitches in total okay, so i just finished round 16 and i now have my 12 stitches left i did not put the stitch marker back in because we're now just closing it up and this is what it currently looks like i did also stuff it just a bit more as i finished up that last round 
And now all we're going to do is invisible decrease um, until we feel like it's enough. <laughs> I usually never have like the same amount, so that's why I can't see a certain thing yet. But let's just go ahead and do this together on camera. So I'll do the whole thing with you guys. Let's just go ahead and do our invisible decrease. So since you've already, you should know this by now if you made it this far. I'm oh, sorry, I hope this isn't so rude, but um, okay, yeah. So let's just do our invisible decrease. But yeah, so I'm just kind of going a little bit faster because it's just invisible decreasing. I just did my first one. This is my second. This is my third. Again, it won't be as hard for you guys if you didn't use a giant ball like I did, but it's because I can't really push the hook like through it because it's literally just right there. But that was the third, right? Yeah, okay, that was the third one. This is the fourth. Here is the fifth. This is the sixth. Oops. And this is the sixth one. Ooh, that's hard. Okay, um, I feel like I could just cannot decrease anymore. If you can decrease one more time, you can go ahead and do that. But I'm just going to weave the rest in. So let's take our scissors. We have to cut off some excess yarn. Okay, sorry. I was trying to remember what I did when I first made this. But you're going to actually need a lot of yarn. Not a lot, but let me see. About, let's say that much. I'm going to cut this off. Because um, with this excess yarn right here, we're also going to be sewing it onto the rattle part. If you... Um, if it's a little bit too hard, if you don't have enough of the yarn, you can always add it later. But I just like to do it this way because it's already attached to the ball instead of having to retie it. I don't know if that really made sense, but anyways. So now that I've taken or I have this much yarn left, I'm just going to have this loop here. And the way I like to secure it is take all of this yarn and put it through this loop. And then we're just going to pull on it. And as you can see, that loop is closing. It's just one way to secure it. Now because I didn't fully close up this gap here, what I'm going to do is weave uh, this yarn through the circle, like around here to close it up. So you can see this is where I ended off. This next stitch right here, I'm just going to poke my crochet hook through. I'm going to grab this yarn and oops, I'm going to pull it through that stitch. And it's just going to be a little bit hard. If you see my videos, you know that I always do that, do, do this, but it's going to be a little bit more work because of the yarn is much longer. So the next, I'll do the same thing to the next stitch. Poke my hook through. Take that yarn. Go to your next stitch. Take your yarn and pull it through. Let's do one more. And then let's pull on this yarn and you can see I just closed it up just like that. Um, so with this yarn right here, this um, as I was mentioning, you're going to use this to sew it on to the rattle part. We're going to create like a little, um, later on in part two or three, we're going to create this yellow rectangle that's going to go halfway around this wooden uh, ring thing. And then you're going to take this part and it's, we're going to sew it onto that yellow part. So that's why we have all of this excess yarn right here. And we can just leave this for now because we are now done with the base um, of the face. So that is the end of part one and I'll see you guys in part two.